Good morning. We have announcers lined up. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, this morning after church, we are going to be having a breakfast immediately following the service downstairs to thank Pastor Lukey and Marsha for their service to us the last two plus years. Um, <laughs> We hope that everyone will join us. We have lots of food. So um, the, if you go down the steps uh, near the um, elevator and then the food, is, food and drinks are in the back of the cafeteria, you'll be closest to the door to go in. So we hope that you'll join us down there, please. And then in two weeks um, is the installation for uh, Pastor Jording at two o'clock at a special service. Following, there will be fellowship and a dinner. Um, we do ask that you let us know. It would help to um, prepare uh, for food. So either sign up in the back on the narthex, tell me. Um, you can call Becky if that's easiest in the uh, office. So just let us know if possible. Thank you. Good morning. One additional thing. Pastor Jordan is moving on Merle Avenue. We started moving him into the house yesterday. So his last service was last Sunday. So he'll be coming in here dropping stuff off. So if you see him, say hello. Start a conversation with him. It was a lot of fun moving him. With that, let us pass the peace. Oh, welcome. Welcome. God's peace with you. God's peace with you. God's peace. Peace with you. God's peace. now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
This is the day that the Lord has made. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Christ has risen from the dead. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. Let us now confess our sin to God, our merciful Father. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We are by nature sinful, and we have not always lived as your thankful and joyful people. We have indeed turned away from one another in our thinking, speaking, and doing. We have done the evil you forbid, and have not done the good you demand. We do repent, and sorry for these sins. Have mercy on us, gracious Father. Forgive us all that is past, blot out our sins, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, direct our lives so that we serve you in true faithfulness. Grant us steadfastness among all the changes of this world, and build your kingdom among us, here, through Jesus Christ our Lord. God has promised forgiveness of sins to those who repent and turn to him. May he keep you in his grace by the Holy Spirit and grant you a victorious life on earth and finally a triumphant life with him in heaven forever. As an ordained servant of Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As well-loved Easter people, Rejoice and be glad. You are free indeed. Amen. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. O oh Lord my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. Sing praises to the Lord, O ye his saints. Give thanks to his holy name. And to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. psalmist writes, O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The strains of Easter joy echo through all the services of the Easter season. Each Sunday is a little Easter for us to celebrate as together we sing of the victory of our God. We are amazed Easter people and our amazement is best expressed in our songs of joy. One of the oldest hymns in our hymn book is The Day of Resurrection, written by John of Damascus in the, 18th, in the 8th century. Together we sing stanza one that celebrates the Passover of gladness. Yeah. Hey. 
writes, when the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The victory of Christ is the lasting source of joy that gives hope to the grieving and assurance to all the faithful. We rejoice as we sing the second stanza of the day of resurrection. in the book of Revelation I saw what appeared to be a sea of glass mingled with fire and also those who had conquered the beast standing beside the sea of glass with harps of God in their hands and they sing the song of Moses the servant of God and the true song of the Lamb saying great and amazing are your deeds O Lord God Almighty just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. The celebration of the victory of Jesus, the Lamb of God, slain for our salvation, goes on throughout eternity. We join in the joyful praise as we think the, the third stanza of the Day of Resurrection. Through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The third reading, or first reading for this, the third Sunday at Easter, is written in Acts chapter 3, verses 11 through 21. While the lame man who was now healed clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's Astounded. And when Peter saw that he addressed the people, men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers, but what God foretold by the mouth of the prophets 
that as Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out. The times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what will we, what will we be has not yet appeared. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, because we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who has thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practice, practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness he is righteous, as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. Christ has risen from the dead. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. Hallelujah. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. <laughs> the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be to you. And they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled and why do, you doubt, why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I'm sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of sins, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. be my confidence we just sang and that's the theme I'd like to talk about based on the verse just before our epistle lesson in 1st John when he appears we may be confident and unashamed before him at his com at his coming to be confident and I pick up themes from the gospel lesson where indeed the disciples on the way to Emmaus suddenly saw God, saw Jesus as God and their hearts burned within them and then Jesus appeared to the other disciples this is the first time uh, as opposed to the second time a week later and he opened their minds and then this epistle lesson talks about those who are in Jesus do not persist in any sin. And I want to develop those three themes uh, to make the point of how we are confident before God. 
and how we can live that confidence out, especially now as you begin a new relationship with a new pastor. Well, the gospel lesson is from John, and is, is from Luke, I'm sorry, and it starts or, with the walk to Emmaus. That's not in what we actually read, but it's the part just before it. And it's a very favorite passage and illustration for me. Now the same day, two of them were going to the village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking about the day's event that started on that Sunday morning when the women and then the disciples went to the empty tomb and proclaimed that he's risen. They didn't know what all that meant. That's what these men were talking about. This is not part of the game plan that they understood to happen. And then someone came alongside and walked with them. It was a long walk, six miles. It's about two hours of time to actually be interacting. And the disciples shared their disappointment that what happened wasn't at all what they had foreseen because their Savior was killed, crucified as a common criminal, and now they had no idea where he was. And Jesus conversed with them and said to them, How foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. And then he explained it. And any explanation of the significance of Jesus' death and resurrection has to start in the Old Testament with the prophecies of the Messiah coming. And then they urged him, Stay with us, for it's nearly evening. The day is almost over. And so he, Jesus, went to stay with them. And when he was at table with them, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. And here's the phrase, Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us? while we talked with us on the road and opened up the scripture to us. Our hearts were burning. I've been here long enough now, actually, it's two and three quarters of the year. Who would have thought? I certainly never anticipated that. And I know the personal stories of many of you, and I know how in some of those stories, uh, experiences of the heart burning in recognition of God's presence and impact on their lives. I know how important that is. And that can be part of our confidence as we stand before God and present ourselves to Him. And as we think about our readiness to join Him in eternity, the confidence that we have in Jesus Christ. There are some Christians and some churches that make this a prerequisite for being a church member. That is that you are able to tell a conversion story, a born-again story, a time when your heart was burning with recognition of Jesus and the impact on your life. And that's wonderful. The problem is that what happens to believers who don't have that kind of burning experience and the lack of confidence that comes if indeed the emphasis on is on that kind of personal born again experience that's not the basis for a lasting confidence in Christ. But I hope that those of you who've had that kind of somewhat burning experience do take confidence in that. And frankly, I'm going to address my comments to a congregation that's about to receive a new pastor with all the joy that that has. I do hope that as you get to know him, and let Pastor Jordan get to know you, that you'll share burning heart experiences if you've had them, and if they're a memorable part of your relationship with God. But if that's not you, then the phrase that 
I'd like to highlight comes from the actual gospel lesson. What I told you with the walk to Emmaus is the section just before our gospel lesson. And by the way, that walk to Emmaus is a phrase in my mind that has special meaning here in Cleveland. Because, in fact, there was a movement among Lutheran churches called Walk to Emmaus that invited lay people to share their personal experiences of getting to know Jesus. And it was a wonderful uh, experience while it lasted. It started on a Friday evening and went through a Saturday morning. But that kind of time commitment just became more difficult as our pace of life picked up. And so I was kind of the counselor at the end of that emphasis and it just became much more difficult to get that commitment of time from Friday night through Saturday morning. But the thrust of it is share those personal experiences when your faith took on new meaning. And now comes the gospel lesson. Uh, Jesus stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. And we go through the process of showing him, showing them his wounds. And then he said, Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. This is not a quick one-time story. It's a story that has its beginning centuries before. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand Scripture. Opening minds. That's more our heritage as we come at uh, our Christian life from a Lutheran background, which is true for most here, not all. Some are discovering it for a first time. But our heritage is one of opening minds, starting with Luther's catechism that became the prerequisite for becoming a member, a communicant member of the congregation, that you understand the six chief parts of the catechism and the chief parts of our faith and how forceful, helpful that has been for many, many Christians who grew up with this kind of mind-expanding emphasis of understanding Scripture and its application and that pregnant question, what does this mean? trying to apply those key elements, our faith, to what we are doing in our daily living. But is that the full basis for our confidence before God? And here I speak with the knowledge that many of you have, that people who have been confirmed and who grew up in the heritage often aren't around anymore so that this did not become the kind of convincing experience that saw them into and through a life of commitment to Jesus Christ in their Christian walk. So it isn't just a matter of opening minds. And had I known I would be here for two and three quarter years, I would have put more emphasis on finding opportunities for Bible study, for putting yourself in the Holy Spirit's workshop so that in fact the meaning of Scripture could be explored with other Christians. And there are some lively small groups in other congregations as well as here that uh, make this an exciting part of the Christian life. We have those on Thursdays and then after our worship service here. And I hope with your new pastor, Pastor Jording, you're open to exploring additional ways to be in the Word, sharing its application to your life. That is a lifelong process as opposed to just relying on what it is that you've heard and what it is you memorize and go through life without expanding your understanding of what it means to be a Christian. The third theme 
is more difficult to unpack and it's from the epistle lesson the first letter of John and this is chapter 3 where the emphasis is on how we live that in fact people who know Christ live differently and there's a great phrase here no one who lives in him keeps on sinning and so we have an emphasis on the opposite of keeping on sinning which is not sinning which is living the moral right life the just life before God and that's very appealing especially to church people as we have gathered here the faithful who have been at it for years and it becomes easy to think that I'm confident of my relationship to God because of the good life that I've lived and I try very hard to live the life that Jesus expects me and God bless you for that but that's not all by itself a firm foundation for being confident of your relationship with God especially going into eternity the key thing is that you not be committed to doing what you know would be sins and that means being willing to repent and the first chapter of first John gives us a wonderful phrase that you probably know many of you by heart because it shows up in the confession of sins at the beginning of a typical Lutheran church service if we claim to be without sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us if we confess our sins he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness if we claim we have not sinned we make him to be a liar and his word has no place in it sin is a fact of life and a committed Christian does not knowingly go about continuing to sin and we get into a whole uh, bundle of issues about what is sin and what is it to can be to continue in sin and then the emphasis on as I just read repenting and renewing the commitment to live the kind of life Christ wants that's what we want to aim for and I can't touch on this big issue of how you live without sin without getting back to the real strength of a Lutheran heritage and that is the emphasis that's not on our sinless life because indeed as I just read from first John no one lives without sin so where does the confidence come and that's the cardinal passage out of Luther's work that's been handed on over the century from Ephesians 2 we are justified by grace not by works lest any man should boast so when that time comes for you to face your maker and be confident of your relationship to him that confidence rests on God's grace and then on God sending his spirit to change us so that we indeed can continue to sin no more but it is God's grace that in fact is the basis for our new relationship with God I want to pick out one more phrase out of our gospel lessons and I mean out of our scripture lessons and that is the first lesson which is Acts 2 excuse me Acts 3 where Peter is presenting to people uh, the message and says we are witnesses of this and then next week we get into more of that Acts lesson and we have this luscious phrase for we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard the renewed life the life that comes with 
confession of sins and acceptance of God's grace and the Holy Spirit renewed life just flows out in making that kind of witness that we cannot help but make now often people think of that in terms of having the right words to explain that faith but more basic is the right life the living that says in so many ways this is what I believe and it shows up in faithfulness in worship services but the key thing is that you have made a commitment and are making a commitment to live in God's way and that is your witness and when the occasion happens to explain why you live the way you live the words will come as you try to explain to someone else the meaning of what it is you experience in worship together the meaning of what it is you experience in being in fellowship with other Christians and I urge you to think about what those words might be and I've been pointing you to a relationship with your new pastor pastor Jordy and may that be a relationship where you with him explore how this congregation can carry on the work that is we've talked about in our lessons this day of making a witness to other people of why it is important to know Jesus Lord we ask your spirit to come upon us to change us help us in true repentance and then help us become witnesses of your gracious love and what that means for daily living in Jesus name Amen rise for prayer let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs we pray for the whole church that the message of salvation may joyfully be proclaimed throughout all the world and the forgiveness of sins be celebrated around the globe Lord in your mercy we pray for the nations of the world that governments would be the source of blessing to those who are governed and that oppression in all forms may be hindered bringing a sense of security and well-being in every place Lord in your mercy we pray for ourselves in this amazing season of our Lord's great victory that we may truly be Easter people all year long radiating the light of Christ in our homes, workplaces, and communities. Lord, in your mercy. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever 
Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.